The Toronto Raptors have been linked to a wild Kyle Kuzma trade in recent reports as Masai Ujiri has obviously begun a rebuild of this Toronto Raptors roster and Bruce Brown is an asset that's being dangled all across the NBA. And the Raptors currently, as constructed, have a major hole at the power forward position, especially after trading away Pascal Siakam. Now, a lot of people think, hey, this team is going full out rebuild mo mode, going younger, getting draft picks, all those types of things. But we know Masai Ujiri, Bobby Webster, they're planning on making a ton of minor moves around the fringes that continue to steadily improve this roster. And a recent report basically indicates that this isn't going to be a crazy swing for the fences move, but it could be a deal that has major upside for the Toronto Raptors. So we're going to break down the report, what it means, how realistic it is, and how it sort of affects the future of the Toronto Raptors if this deal goes down. Because I know there's going to be a lot of uh, divided opinions in terms of whether or not this makes sense for the Toronto Raptors. So let's dive straight into the report. The, basically, a report has come out from Brett Siegel essentially saying the Toronto Raptors are another team to keep an eye on regarding Kyle Kuzma as they look to move swingman Bruce Brown this offseason. Masai during the Raptors' front office have always made their intentions of retooling their roster clear instead of rebuilding it prominent. So Going out and bringing in Kuzma to pair alongside Emmanuel Quickly and RJ Barrett would certainly reflect this notion. So this is a very interesting sort of uh, proposition and uh, proposal report coming out regarding Kyle Kuzma coming to the Toronto Raptors because Kuzma is obviously a big name. I want to say, you know, star, super, definitely not a superstar star player, but you know, Known across the NBA, especially with this time during the LA Lakers, you know, the Lonzo Ball rising. He is a guy that is familiar to a lot of uh, casual NBA fans, given uh, his style, his off-the-court stuff. But he has been a player that has really put up some, quietly put up some really good numbers for the Washington Wizards in recent seasons. I mean, averaging 22.2 points per game, 6.6 .6 rebounds, 4.2 assists. I was pretty shocked, honestly. I, again, I've been following his stats and, you know, look at the Kuzma highlights lately. And, you know, these could be a case of bad stats, good, uh, Good stats, bad team. Not bad stats, good team. But uh, he is shooting just 33% behind the three-point line, 46% from the field. He's 6'9", only 28 years old, despite the fact he's been in the league for a while now at this point. Shoots 41% on corner threes, which is encouraging. Obviously, um, with the three-point percentage being 33% overall, it's nice that he's able to bang him down in the corners. But... Only 78% of his uh, three-point shots are assisted, which is interesting from a big man that, uh, you know, as a floor space, he's creating a lot more of his threes than uh, you might imagine. And, you know, he does score from all over the court. Again, only 34% of his shots are from behind the three-point line. So he is a floor spacing big man. Even the percentages aren't crazy elite here now at this point. But he's a dude that currently with the Washington Wizards is just... Not being utilized here at the prime of his career. Or he's being utilized, but it's not really affecting winning basketball. The Wizards are a team that very much should be in the direction of getting younger. They trade away Bradley Beal. They brought in a new front office. So it feels like this is an actual opportunity when a deal can go down. And frankly, that's what the reports are saying. That Kyle Kuzma trade to be explored... Uh, Kyle Kuzma trade to be explored by teams after Wizards deadline talks. So people expect him to get dealt this offseason. But there are question marks about whether or not a trade uh, with the Toronto Raptors would make sense because there wasn't a huge market for him and Kyle Kuzma reportedly didn't have interest in joining the Dallas Mavericks ahead of the trade deadline for a very small package. Like there wasn't a crazy return, but he didn't like the fit down there in Dallas and now they're going to the NBA finals and stuff. So I definitely expect Kyle Kuzma to be dealt, but whether or not the Toronto Raptors make sense, well, let's take a look. Because the Wizards, again, have to accept a deal. And Bruce Brown is a guy that, you know, looking at his uh, his numbers, right? We'll get those up uh, properly here. 11 points per game, 4 rebounds, 3 assists. Doesn't really make sense in terms of uh, what the Washington Wizards are looking for. But they are a team that, frankly, are in an actual rebuild. The Raptors might be in a retool, rebuild sort of point. Bruce Brown is uh, is a guy that can be brought in and uh, thrown into a full-out rebuild as an expiring contract. That's the value of it, because you look at sort of what uh, Kyle Kuzma's sort of stats are out there right now, right? He is a dude that, looking at his contract, he is making $21 million, $23 million next season, $21 million the season after, and 26 uh, to, uh, God, I'm reading the years. 19 million over and by 2026, 2027. So that's a significant contract, and that's why his value is not that high. So basically, the value of sending Bruce Brown to the Washington Wizards and taking back Kyle Kuzma is hey, 
The Raptors are willing to eat up this contract for a guy that hasn't been able to affect winning for the Washington Wizards. And then you just kind of, uh, the Wizards have more flexibility to tank and rebuild and retool and all that type of stuff. And then the Raptors bring in a guy that can play around R.J. Baird Emmanuel quickly. And I'm shocked that uh, Brett Siegel in that report didn't mention Scotty Barnes. You know, it's the you know, centerpiece of this Toronto Raptors team now at this point. Because, frankly, our roster looks a lot more complete and makes a whole ton more sense. You know, with IQ, R.J. Baird, Scotty Barnes. Kyle Kuzma and Jakob Pertl out there, that, that roster seems a bit more complete. Seems like we'd be going into season with uh, an opportunity, and then obviously the Raptors would probably have to sweeten the package a little bit. And looking at our assets that we have moving forward, I don't think we trade a first-round pick. If we have to attach a first in this deal, that is silly by the Toronto Raptors, given the fact that we are a retooling team, you know, potentially rebuilding, depending on how the retool goes in the short term. But basically, you know, if we gave up a 2026 20, second and a 2020, 20, I don't know how the stepping rule applies for uh, second round picks there, but give up a couple of seconds. I am cool with trading Bruce Brown to the Washington Wizards in a deal that brings back Kyle Kuzma if it's just Bruce Brown in a couple seconds. You bring... You have the opportunity to bring in a dude, regardless of its empty stats, bad team and stuff, that's averaging 22 points per game. That's not super old and washed. Has definitely six years left in his NBA career. You know, definitely while he's under contract, it's going to be in the prime of his NBA career. He is a dude that I think, you know, Masai Jerry's talked about flexibility, has talked about, you know, wanting to be able to play with uh, the open market, all those types of things. I think Kyle Kuzma, you know, coming into this group, regardless of all the memes, all the stuff off the court and all those types of things and him struggling with the Washington Wizards, I think for Bruce Brown in a couple seconds, that's a risk you take. You just go for it. Now, is that a competitive sort of price out there on the open market? Maybe given the years left on Kyle Kuzma's contract and how teams are, you know, more cap struck with the changes in the CPA that are, CBA that are coming and all those types of things. The Raptors do have that flexibility, have that cap space. So that's something that you take a look at. But, you know, the Raptors have the ability, especially if they're trading up Bruce Brown, to take in Kuzma's contract. Now, long term, you're going to have Yaka Pertl, Emmanuel Quickly, RJ Barrett, Scotty Barnes, and Kuzma under longer contracts. So that probably means you're giving up the star boy, Gary Trent Jr. He's not going to be in on a long term deal, maybe a shorter term contract or something along those lines. But, Basically, you're kind of uh, building in. You're going in with a new core of uh, that that five, those five players I talked about. Maybe you can make some deals, make some adjustments around Jakob to get more shooting, more floor spacing, but you don't want to lose, obviously, the defense that he provides for your roster. But that's kind of where the Toronto Raptors would be with this sort of deal happening. Now, do I think it's realistic that uh, the Raptors end up, you know, Going through with this deal, I think it might be tough. Kuzma has really improved on the defensive end significantly, so that makes it, I think, more and more likely that Masai Ujiri would take the risk in using up that cap space and eating that there. But I think that would just be such a value increase, a buy low in a Kyle Kuzma at this point here right now. I, I don't see if the opportunity is available. You know, they accept a Bruce Brown. Maybe, you know, maybe you throw in a different asset or two here. I don't want to give up a first for uh, Kyle Kuzma along with a Bruce Brown, who that expiring contract is valuable. But yeah, that's uh, if the opportunity is there, if there's no other deals out there on the table for the Washington Wizards, I don't see whether the Raptors don't swing for the fences with this. But again, we'll see how it all plays out. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. You guys are best thing as far as subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. I'm signing out. Cheers.